right, are we ready? It's Monday evening. It is the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video. It's weather for weather geeks. We started the weekend with some rain, but ended with a very fine day on Sunday. We had another winter today. But of course, dry weather is becoming more and more of a story as we head deeper into May at the Youngstown Warren Airport. On Saturday morning, uh, we registered a little over a half an inch worth of rain, but still, for the month, we're running quite a deficit now. 1.3 is where we stand, 1.32 inches behind the average. Now that's since May the 1st. When we go back 30 days, so back to about April 22nd, uh, a lot of Northeast Ohio, Northwest PA, Western New York has been pretty dry over the last month or so. Some of the areas that are doing a little bit better than others in our viewing area anyway, Southern areas, Southeastern areas, closer to East Liverpool, Selineville, and then uh, heading across towards Elwood City and parts of Beaver County, PA. Uh, but even there, the surplus, if you will, is very meager. Uh, it's getting a little dry. Uh, we're not uh, in a drought or anything like that, but if this trend were to continue for several weeks, we're going to be talking about some drought conditions as we head into the summer. Now, you noticed today, of course, the haze. Uh, the uh, sky was milky all day today. The wildfire smoke has been locally thick. Let's actually take a quick look outside uh, with our Niles camera. Kind of looks like Mars out there this evening. This is about as thick as some of this wildfire smoke has been in our sky over the last week or so. And I think as we head into the day tomorrow, not much is going to change. Uh, the wildfire smoke is still going to be kind of drifting around. Now, of course, this is all high altitude. It's not a hazard for us. It just makes the sky look a little bit duller, a little bit... Uh, kind of hazy or milky, if you will, or ruddy. Um, same thing on Tuesday. It's going to be a nice day. The sun will be out. There won't be many clouds in the sky, but it's still going to be a little bit hazy at times on our Tuesday. Taking a quick look at the nation as a whole on this Monday evening, it's pretty quiet. One severe weather risk this evening across extreme southwestern Oklahoma, the panhandle of Texas, showery weather across the Rocky Mountains. It's going to be a wet week in Florida. Numerous showers and storms across the peninsula early this evening, and that extends up into Parts of Georgia, that's the system that will eventually maybe give us some headaches as we head towards the upcoming weekend. We're going to talk about that in, in just a moment at the end of this video. But in the meantime, the sky's clear enough this evening that you'll see a thin crescent moon up there not long after sunset this evening. Uh, very near, or sort of near, I should say, uh, bright Venus. Tomorrow evening, the moon will be higher in the sky and closer to Mars in the evening sky. The moon will set fairly early this evening, but uh, catch it uh, not long after sunset and then look up into the left, you're going to see bright Venus up there. All right, of course, with the lack of rain of late, uh, the uh, allergy season roars on. Uh, pollen count still very high. Tree pollen is the primary culprit here, mulberry and walnut, along with some grasses, which are up in the moderate category. And uh, we're not going to get much relief from this over the next several days with not much, if any, rain coming our way through the end of the week. So we're high and dry on Tuesday. Now, uh, you may have noticed over the weekend the forecast started to change some for mid to late week the model started cluing in on a stronger cold front that will make inroads on Wednesday. It looks like this would just be from start to finish a warm week a few days ago. But now it looks like the warmth is going to be interrupted for a couple of days by this cold front that comes through on Wednesday. With little fanfare, maybe there's a sprinkle. We don't even have that in our forecast right now, but I can't rule out maybe a sprinkle with this Wednesday afternoon. Probably comes through dry, though. Chilly, then, for Wednesday night. Thursday, Thursday night into Friday morning, and then the warmth will resume by Friday afternoon and the weekend. But yeah, despite some sun, it's going to be a little on the cool side by Thursday with temperatures not much higher than the middle 60s. All right, let's talk about the weekend. Uh, we've got Memorial Day weekend coming up. A lot of people have plans, of course, this time of the year. The pattern's going to become a little bit bottled up as we head towards the weekend. We have a ridge of high pressure. That's this up here. And then down here, we have this kind of cutoff upper level low pressure system, which is going to strengthen and start jogging a little bit to the north and west. Now, our weekend weather will be greatly influenced by where this exactly goes. If it stays far enough to the south, our weekend looks pretty good because we'll be closer to this ridge up here. And it could be even warmer than our forecast has over the weekend. But it's not going to take much of a jog to the north and west of this upper low for our weekend forecast to start going downhill. Right now, we're kind of playing in the middle. We have a mostly dry forecast for the weekend. But uh, we're going to be keeping a close eye on the model trends, certainly over the next couple of days. Uh, because if this were to come close enough to us, we're going to have to introduce more shower chances to our weekend forecast. And that would also keep a lid on temperatures. Wherever this upper level low goes, underneath it, it's going to be kind of cool and kind of showery this weekend. Right now, odds favor it being far enough to the south that we won't have to worry too much about it. But again, it's not going to take much of a northward jog for this to become more of an issue for us over the weekend. 
Either way, this is not looking like a particularly active period, once again at the end of May and the start of June, whatever happens over the weekend. We're not looking at plentiful rainfall over the next couple weeks. This is today's 8 to 14 day outlook as we roll into June. The pattern likely will continue to be kind of the same with wet weather in the Rockies and the south and a lack of wet weather across the Great Lakes. This is a pretty classic looking El Nino map. Even though El Nino is kind of in, in its embryonic stages right now and it really won't come on hot and heavy until we get deeper into the summer and certainly into the fall. But this is a pretty classic El Nino looking precipitation map with dry weather favored around the Great Lakes and wet weather in parts of the west and the south. I am, you know, I am concerned as as you know if you've been watching these videos of late, I am concerned about a dry summer across our area and I think coming up later this week, maybe on Thursday, we're going to do an official summer outlook. We've been hinting at it in this video frequently, but we're going to put everything together and put together kind of a, a summer outlook probably on Thursday. It won't be as detailed and there won't be as much that goes into it as a winter outlook because that's a higher impact thing. There's a lot uh, more that goes into a winter outlook than a warm season outlook. But still, El Nino is going to be a player as we go into the summer season, and we'll talk more about that coming up this week. We'll talk about precipitation and temperature trends for June, July, and August. Again, maybe Thursday is when we're targeting that to go online. Uh, you'll find that on social media. I'll link to it on my social media, and uh, its home will be on my weather blog, Eric WFMJ. Dot com. In the meantime, thanks for watching on this Monday evening. Let's do it again on Tuesday. I'll see you then.